Here we have two identical PMC FAC12 speakers. The left hand speaker mounted on conventional spikes on a carpet on a suspended wooden floor. Very typical of a lot of people's situation. On the right, we have the same speaker on a podium. On top of the speakers, we have two Android tablets running a very, very good little app acting basically as a seismograph. If we tap this one on the left and the one on the right, you can see that they've both got the same sensitivity. If we now stamp our foot on the floor, you can see that on the speaker, which is on the spikes, there's a very strong transmission through, which shows on the graph. And on the podium, when we stamp on the floor, there's no trace whatsoever. This shows quite clearly that the podium is truly isolating vibration going from the floor to the speaker. If we now tap the speaker on the left with our finger, you can see the impulse and then the ringing on the speaker. If we do it on the right speaker, which is on the podium, there's no ringing at all, just the impulse. If we have a close look at the trace on the left speaker, you can see clear ringing after the impulse. This shows that there is a problem spiking a speaker to the floor. The speaker is rigidly coupled to the floor and when you put the impulse in, the speaker acts as a resonator with the mass of the drivers in the top of the box springing against the spring of the bottom of the cabinet and the spring of the floor, causing the oscillations. And this means that every time you get a bass note, there's going to be a ringing and a smear in the bass. To the podium, there is no ringing, which means that every bass note comes out clearly. Now we're all led to believe that a solid concrete floor doesn't need any isolation. However, if we look at the results of the stomp test, you see a huge ringing. There's a vast amount coming through the floor. This is because the whole floor bounces up and down from the vibrations. And you can see that there's not an awful lot of difference from a suspended wooden floor, other than the ringing as at a higher frequency on the concrete, which shows there's a higher cue in the concrete. With the speaker on the podium, with the same stomp, there is nothing getting through. Isolation is virtually mandatory for every speaker, regardless of the floor. Here we have a pictorial representation of earthquakes all over the world. At the bottom of this graph, you can see that a force zero to force one is continuous. This force zero on the, the Richter scale means a movement of one micron. A force one is a movement of 10 microns. And this is there regardless of where you are in the world. It's just the background noise in the ground. If we go up the scale and you can see that a force two or a three earthquake on the Richter scale here on the left, there's 100,000 a year going up to the enormous earthquakes for seven and eight, which are just very, very rare events. The background murmur of the earth, which is one to 10 microns, is in the earth constantly. The vibration in the earth transmits through your foundations, up through into the floor of your room, through the spikes, into your speaker causing the whole cabinet to vibrate with this background noise in the earth. Now, this is not a good idea when you consider that if you're reproducing fine detail of your music, the decay of a cymbal or reverberation at the end of a big chord in a concert hall, the cone could be moving as little as 0.01 microns. So you hear you are swamping the speaker with a hundred to a thousand times the vibration of the cone which is easily swamping your music. When you put it on the podium, all of the background vibration in the ground is eliminated from the cabinet, allowing the fine detail of your music to come through unimpeded. One of the reasons that is espoused for spiking your speakers to the floor is to hold the cabinet still when reproducing loud bass information. The reasoning being 
that if you let the cabinet be free, when the comb moves forward, the cabinet will move back and take away all the base. Now if we put some numbers on this and say, for argument's sake, that the base cone weighs 40 grams, which is typical, and the cabinet weighs 40 kilos, which is typical, then the cone movement will be 1,000 times greater than the cabinet movement by Newton's third law, which means you lose 1,000th of the intensity of the music, which is 0.01 dB, which is not a lot. We can see here we have both speakers spiked to the floor. If we bang on one speaker, the vibration is transmitted through to the other speaker. Now when the speaker is playing, that vibration is also transmitted into the floor. Not only into the other speaker, but also into your hi-fi equipment, which is very, very susceptible to vibration, especially record player or a valve amplifier with delicate grids also sensitive to vibration is your neighbours because that vibration in the floor transmits beautifully through the structure of the building and can upset people rooms away. The vibration from the speaker that goes into the floor which then re-radiates from the floor and can give you a feel of bass through your seat that is a distortion and that distortion could be well heard by going into a room below where a speaker is playing on a suspended floor and listening to the distorted bass that comes through the ceiling. When you put it on the podium, that is eliminated. And the result of that is far more enjoyable, far lower distortion music. It may be slightly less thumpy, but it's much, much more true. Very neighbour friendly and it doesn't interfere with the rest of your hi-fi.